news with Gina, Gina. The news with Gina Grad. Well, you had a couple of questions about who's the favorite for the Super Bowl. I'd be happy to help you out with that. There's still two weeks to go before Super Bowl 54 in Miami, but odds makers see the Kansas City Chiefs as the early favorites over the San Francisco 49ers. Late Sunday night sports books across the country had the Chiefs as a one point favorite. Oh, one point. Uh, right, hold well, on. Most experts predict a very close game, and barring any big changes like a key injury, expect the line to remain under two points. Uh, the Chiefs were the favorite to win the Super Bowl when the season began. The Niners had a 40 to 1. The favorite team has won 34 out of 53 Super Bowls. I believe the last Chiefs Super Bowl was 1970, uh, 49ers 2013. I think this thing's going to move back to, I think it'll move down to a pick em. I wouldn't be surprised. These are, these are two very good teams. Uh, yeah, and uh, I mean, the Chiefs got bullied in the first quarter and then came charging back the, right the, the, ship. The, the 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 49ers just rolled the whole time it'll be it'll be interesting um i'm i i announced it, 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 god life it's so interesting and fast and whatever um mahomes or is it mahomes mahomes mahomes, mm-hmm. mahomes. what up mahomes I, what up mahomes i said or i said it like I said uh, game game twelve of the season. I was like, "Oh, Mahomes, the guy was supposed to be the toast of the league." Mm-hmm. And what's his name on the the Baltimore just lit the guy up. It's all about him. It's all about him. No more Mahomes anymore. Now he's, he he's back. He had a big run at the end of the game. He's going to the Super Bowl, and he completely flipped the script. Yeah. That's uh, insightful. Sorry, to interrupt you. That's insightful because Lamar Jackson was the you know the big story this year. We kind of forgot about Patrick Mahomes. The MVP last year, I'm pretty sure he was. He's a stud. He was out for a couple games this year, which is why we kind of forgot about him. Like he's really, really he's good. back, right? But he was n- he was not getting the ink. Yeah. yeah, and now he's going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, so. and you know we've talked before about you know how you envy people who get really excited about stuff, and we just can't. Uh, you just don't have that motivation. Mm. The second the game ended last night, my mom sent a group text to the entire family. Uh, I think Kaylin has the picture. She ran got right over to the Kansas City. You know, heart store, what a heart of Kansas City store, started throwing elbows to get these t shirts to send to the whole family the AFC Championships, Miami bound Kansas City Chiefs. She would, I mean, these these will be in the mail and delivered to my house in two days. I'm, she ran right I'm, out to the store. I'm jealous, <laughs> but I also look down my nose at those I people. Know. It's, it's, a simul, it's, it's simultaneous. So you know who should be excited is the uh, the Africans who are going to get the uh, Kansas the City ones? Super Bowl championship. How oh, oh. dare you! Also, what kind of message does that say to constantly send them the loser <laughs> T-shirts? You know what I mean? That's not... There's a great meme going around, like an African kid like wearing a Buffalo Bills Champions T-shirt. Like, right. four years in a row, uh. kicking ass. <laughs> 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 uh, so we'll see. Uh, Prince Harry has made his first public comments on his exit from British royalty, and they're calling that the Megxit. How Added long chair, yeah. good. can yeah. this exist in our woke culture? What's that? Hmm. Just princes and royalty and it's castles. It's crumbling around us bit, as like we see it. White, red-haired it's a, people. Yeah, it's a bit that antiquated. Are wearing yeah. the public, garb The public pays things. for the home renovations. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it, it, it cannot exist simultaneously with Greta Thunberg, right? right. Like, it's going to fall. How dare you, Queen of England? It, it, it's, it's going, weird. right? It's weird yeah. that it exists simultaneously. But this, yeah. this, Especially because it's a throwback to, like, imperialism and, like, conquering other, right. like, you know, poor lands. This, this, everything the sun touches. This is sort of, I feel like this is the tug on the thread of the sweater where it all just starts coming unwrapped. No. I mean, that and a little pedophilia. I was going to say, he started it. <laughs> What's his name? Andrew. Right. So at a charity dinner in London on Sunday, uh, the prince, well, we're still calling that for now, said he wanted to continue supporting the queen, but without the funds from the public, as AJ Benza said, maybe not totally his call on that. Uh, last week, Harry and wife Meghan Markle announced that they were stepping away from the royal family and they want to give up their royal highness titles oh. and pay back the 3.1 million dollars they used to renovate their home. I believe it's called the Frogmore Cottage. Uh, here's a minute of his words from that speech, kind of given his side of the story. You know, I, I, I'll tell you the one thing about the, these kinds of stories that I like. Everybody is miserable on some level, 
It has nothing to do with money and income mm. or a position prestige, or yeah. prestige yeah. or anything. You know, they're sitting around and talking shit about members of the royal family, like you're talking shit about your Aunt Dorothy <laughs> or your fucking neighbor <laughs> guy or whatever. Yeah. It, it's it's so ingrained it. in everybody. Great equalizer. And they're going out and then they're riding home and she's <laughs> had a couple glasses of champagne she's talking shit about somebody else all the same shit we're doing on some real micro yeah. level they're doing on its grand stage That's but right. yet you cannot remove the human from the human as Depeche not. Mode would say people are people oh, that's right Brian all right here's a minute from the speech mm -hmm. the decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back is not one I made lightly it was so many months of talks after so many years of challenges. And I know I haven't always gotten it right, but as far as this goes, there really was no other option. What I want to make clear is we're not walking away. And we certainly aren't walking away from you. Our hope was to continue serving the Queen, the Commonwealth and my military associations, but without public funding. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. I've accepted this knowing that it doesn't change who I am or how committed I am. But I hope that helps you understand what it had come to, that I would step my family back from all I have ever known, to take a, to take a step forward into what I hope can be a more peaceful life. Meanwhile, Meghan's father, because he always has something to say, <laughs> has shared his comments on the Megxit in an upcoming UK documentary, the 75-year-old said. Here's why I don't yeah, really yeah. believe in most conspiracy theories. Oh. If, if there was this world of conspiracies, mm -hmm. wouldn't he have been in a horrible, fiery Uber accident like three years ago? Thomas oh, they Markle? Put him out of yeah. His, yeah. yeah, like, oh, it just went into the bay. Oh, we, yeah. we, 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 what can you do? It took us weeks to find the car. Like, we didn't even know... Yes, yeah, like, like something would happen to him, right? That's, that's a very good point because he is alive and well and has a lot to say. He's King Ralph. Yeah. And he's having a couple of draws off a, a tall boy and yeah. then he's grabbing a microphone and, and going to town, right? And trying to cozy up to the queen by saying, they're destroying the monarchy. They are cheapening it. They are making it shabby. They are turning it into a Walmart with a crown on it. Is this, <laughs> is this her <laughs> biological dad? I believe so. <sighs> Did she? And is her mom the, the, black? Is yes, that... and the mom was the only one from the family invited to the wedding, mm. not the sister and the and the father. You know, it's kind of interesting in terms of our wiring. You know, you see it happening with like a divorce. Like at some point they're in love, and then another point they're not, and then at some point there's a divorce, and then at some point they go, "Look, we're not going to give all the money to the lawyers. Oh. Let's just, you know, whatever." Now you're talking and about marriage story. And then at some point, someone is being accusing the other of being a pedophile, mm -hmm. and they're trying to mm -hmm. get visitation and custody, and it just it goes off the rails. Yeah. I'm interested in when that happens with a daughter and a father. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, like, something's got to go wrong. Thomas this is Megan. war. Wrong. I, I love the idea of you declared war on your daughter. Yeah. She's declared war back. You, you become the Hatfields and the McCoys, yeah. except for you're both Hatfields. <laughs> the Hatfields and the Hatfields. <laughs> Why would you? Yeah. I get it, but wow. It's There's weird that it gets that far down yeah. the road so often. Yeah. And... Um, I don't Fathers feel like your it, daughters. it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't get that far down the road usually with sons because sons have a little more of a wiring mm -hmm. of like I'm going to go out and beat up somebody and take out my aggression. I'll be a Golden Gloves champion or play football or right. something. But the women, man, when the dads gets dicey, fuck with them. No. Ah, oh, so this guy. <laughs> what is this? guy do i don't know what does he do for a living chris i don't know if you can look that he was up. A, he's an american retired tv lighting director and director of photography he uh i knew it worked on general <laughs> hospital he brought he brought megan to the set of married with children a lot okay uh, yeah so that's and they got divorced uh yeah they got divorced i think when she was six yeah if i ever get divorced i'm gonna explain to my kids you don't have to take sides. You can hate both of us. Yeah, equally. <laughs> you can hate mommy's guts no. and daddy's guts. You can guts. alternate it's different healthier. days, every hour, different uh, moods. That's just to generally hate thing. our guts. You can despise both of us. <laughs> no reason to take sides. What is this? this daughters. Is daughters. Be good, fathers are good to your daughters. No, Boys soldier on. I, mm -hmm. I don't like on. this. Have you seen Marriage Story yet? 
I've I've only saw the first half before it really uh, gets into it's the, the. It's all the true cliches you were just talking right. about. Let's not get the lawyers involved. Next thing you know, there's lawyers involved, and it's a arms race. Gets ugly. It gets ugly. Yeah. Is well, there? Yeah. It's never the. It, everyone blames the lawyers, but it's not the lawyer we should blame. It's the divorce cunty friend who convinces mm-hmm. them, like, you better, you got to look out for yourself. Yeah. You know, you got to look out for yourself. You and then they go, the cleaners. just talk to my guy. Yeah. Just, mm. just, just have, have lunch a with him. Just, you, you should just talk to him. Now it's on. Now and, we're rolling. And you're so naive and traumatized at the moment that you have no idea that guess who the best friends in the world are? Both the lawyers right. from each side because they're doing the same job. Yeah, they're at the same country club. They're exactly. hanging out. Exactly. So can right. the same couple. So, marriage yeah. story is all of this. <laughs> it's oh, all of these cliches in one. It's funny that we always, call, we always call the lawyers, we always uh, tip, typically call them Jewish. Mm-hmm. And then we go at the same country club who oftentimes don't let Jews yeah, in. Interesting. Yeah, so which is it? <laughs> they're the going same high out. holiday uh, service. Uh, yeah, let's substitute yeah. country bridge. club same, for that. The same Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> That's right. So speaking of fathers, a North Carolina father was arrested and is charged with simple assault after he rushed and tackled a high school student athlete during a wrestling match who was wrestling his son, according <laughs> mm. to Fox 8 News. Here's the clip because it's oh, too good not nice. to show you. Yeah. I do like it's 15 seconds. I, I, I do like that mama bear thing and a, <laughs> and, a, and a dad every once in a while. Check this out. Everybody's watching. The kid tries to throw him. Slam oh, the ground. Throw him on his head. Hold, please. And there he goes. <laughs> Whoa. Just. Wait. Was that an illegal move? We have Jay Moore in here. <laughs> yeah, we need him to break that down the So footage. that was a serious head slam. Yeah, he didn't like it much. Was, was the head slam illegal? I don't know. It's, uh, I, no, I, I think you. I don't know. I, I, don't, th- I don't know if that's illegal. Uh, the, the, the caption in the video says it's an illegal move. Uh, oh, it's an illegal move. He's holding his rights. <laughs> <laughs> so Barry Lee Jones is charged with simple assault, disorderly conduct. The student athlete he tackled was uh, wrestling Jones' son, who's a student, according to the police report. Uh, that There was melee afterwards. Everybody rushed down there. All the parents. One guy threw the dad to the ground. Oh, white, white, white parents. Yep. Jonas yeah. was processed at the uh, Cabarrus County mm-hmm. Jail. And uh, received a thousand dollar bond. He, the student he tackled, not injured. The expert on the mat at the time of the incident uh, gave uh, the hand signals to call the student athlete's move as illegal. Uh-huh. Um, but that didn't matter. That dad was dad's all red. <laughs> I'll give you a hand signal. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and I, you wonder if there was any booze involved here, mm-hmm. like a little flask shot, something mm-hmm. to take the edge off where your son got in the singlet. How'd that work out for you? <laughs> Taking the edge off. <laughs> I like that dad because he's the opposite of my dad. <laughs> he was there, first of all. He was there. He said, he's already up. beat my dad. And I, I do. I like that. I, I, I like just that like fire. that impulse. And, yeah. uh, and like, that's my kid. You're, you're head slamming. Hey, speaking of that, uh, who was the dad? Um, I'm thinking of when, with the documentary when the car caught on fire and the dad, didn't, wasn't that from the doc? Reached in and pulled his son out of the car? No, but there was a clip. Or did we watch it in here? We did watch it in here. There okay. was a clip of a uh, NASCAR or a sprint car or a circle car, or whatever, like dirt track car, mm-hmm. something that caught on fire and dad went In the oh, shorts and the polo just... Went over the barricade yeah. and just mm-hmm. dove into the car to pull, yeah. his, pull his dad out. Son out. I mean, sorry, to pull yeah. his son out, the dad went over. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, my dad would have started <laughs> running... F- Anyone got a sack of marshmallows? Anybody? <laughs> and Anybody? A skewer. <laughs> and a coat hanger. Quick. Uh, Maybe a chocolate bar. Some graham crackers. <laughs> We're going to watch oh, it. it yeah. Yeah. The Dad dads. went over the top. The, the NASCAR was on father. fire. His flames, like literally, he's wearing wow. shorts. The flames are licking up. Uh, he pulls his oh, son out. Right the when fires are like flashing. <laughs> Don't forget and the he, wallet. He's going back in the car. <laughs> Get the, the radio. Kid is, <laughs> the kid is safe. The dad goes back in. Uh, yeah, he wanted to get something of value I in guess. there. Yeah, we were you. Yeah, the wallet was from the Shelby American dock where one of the guys was under the Daytona and it burst into flames at Daytona, the Shelby Cobra Daytona, mm-hmm. and the guy lost his wallet and was freaked out about his wallet burned. One up. sec. Yeah, that's that was that story. Right. 
Well, it was recently reported that a deaf man was suing Pornhub for not including enough closed captioning services, <laughs> which violates the Americans with Disabilities Act. But now Pornhub firing back. Pornhub offers all yeah. types of services. Pornhub fires back. You duck. Yeah, get out of the way. <laughs> That's what I've learned. Shrub oh, those rise. Put those shop yeah. glasses Put those on pronto. <laughs> <laughs> but Yaroslav Suris says he can't enjoy his pornography without subtitles explaining the plot to him. The site has now decided to respond to the accusations. Pornhub's vice president, Corey Price, had this to say in response to the lawsuit. He said, we understand that Yaroslav Suris is suing Pornhub for claiming we've denied the deaf and hearing impaired access to our videos. While we do not generally comment on active lawsuits, we'd like to take this opportunity to uh, point out that we do have a closed caption category. So according to Move Movie Hub, or I'm sorry, MovieWeb.com. Here are some of the titles you can search for if you're looking for mm. some closed captioning porn. There's Hot Step Aunt Babysits Disobedient Nephew. There's Sexy Cop Gets Witnesses to Talk. And there's Daddy 4K, comma, Allison Comes to Talk About Money to Her Boy's Naughty Father. It's there's also about 1,300 others. It's probably a bad societal sign. What are some of the more salacious ones? <laughs> Some of the most of the themes are like family based, yeah. like stepdad and stepmom and cuckolding and stuff. Like it's it's kind of a weird thing. Like it used Awkward to be porn. the theme would just be this guy's a sailor. He's in town on leave and he's got a boner. And I was like, so this pizza needs to be delivered. Yeah, now they got to work the stepmoms yeah. in and the son. It's and getting nuanced. Whatever. Yeah. By the way, I th- most the theme is guys beating off. Stepmom comes walking in, sees him beating off, and goes, let me show you how to do that right. I feel like I could beat off 10,000 times and be caught 10,000 times and never have anyone offer to help. <laughs> or improve my technique. Yeah, or your form. Form. I could be a maid. Right. It could be a family member. Right. It could be a stranger. I don't feel like anyone would ever catch me beating off and go, yeah, let me tell you how to do it right. Yeah, Let me help tips. you with that. Yeah. Yeah. Now... You're being a little hypocritical and if you're not into that kind of porn because we have a giant Taboo 2 poster in the hallway. That's true. true. <laughs> so which which is it? Well, yeah. here's the problem. Like I both sides your mouth again. <laughs> with porn. In, in you kids, like my son's not going to know his first porn. You know, like Jimmy and I bonded over Sex Boat. Right. Because his neighbor Cleto's dad, you know, it'd be a big deal if he had a VHR, VHS tape and a mm-hmm. player, you know, like I didn't know we didn't have one. My dad didn't have one. So his buddy's dad had sex boat. And it's like, my buddy's dad had sex boat. <laughs> that was, he had taboo too and sex uh. boat. Like the, we, we bonded over that. Yeah. that. You never forget your first porn. No. I know they say it all the time. Yeah, but they it say bear, it for a reason. It bears, it bears repeating. Yeah. So uh, I literally was doing... So what happened was is I hadn't seen Taboo 2 for a decade mm. or, or more. It's like my first porn. Again, it, was my, it wasn't my dad's. Right. And I was like... I was doing Loveline one night. I think Giovanni will figure it all out. Hi, Giovanni, as you listen to this. Um, uh, John, the drummer from System of a Down, <laughs> he said, he called in. He was like, I got Taboo, too. I got an extra copy with your name on it. And I said, all right, Drew, I'm wrapping up early. <laughs> and we wrapped up. I said, you finish out the next 12 minutes. I drove to Van Nuys from Culver City and grabbed that. <laughs> tab. I was being reunited. I, I, it would be like reanimating a, a, your mm. dog from mm. your childhood. Hey, Skipper! <laughs> Come back! Come back! I yeah. missed you. Yeah, so so then I talked about it enough and somebody sent me the Taboo 2 oh, good. painting or oh, poster. Yeah, that was real nice. Artwork. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Art, yeah. Artwork, yeah. Well, Harry Styles is set to headline a big show during the Super Bowl in Miami, but some fans are hoping he cancels. Mm. Harry signed on to headline the Pepsi Zero Sugar Super Bowl 54 party on Miami's Watson Island on the Friday before Super Bowl Sunday with opening on Pro Bowl weekend. <laughs> Mark Ronson in tow, while some Harry Holics, as they're called, oh, are eager to buy up the two hundred fifty dollars tickets. There are those who want him to boycott because of the continuing Colin Kaepernick controversy. An organized group of fans What's got... What's the continuing... What's that? Uh, hashtag Harry back out 
on Twitter because it's related to the NFL. Yeah. It's related to the Super Bowl, and they just have to keep it going. Uh, they have comments I, if like... If you're on you know, a Pornhub and you type into the search Harry back out, <laughs> uh, it's not going to be a good afternoon for you. It's uh, not a Harry Styles protest video? Take it from somebody oh, okay. who's been there. I believe you. <laughs> You'll not want any closed captioning for that. Yeah, <laughs> that was really the point of the story. I wonder if deaf guys get busted for beating off at a higher rate. You yeah. know what I mean? Because oh. we could, I always had like wood floors, you right. hear like stepmom coming down the hall, the, you know what I mean? Keys jingle keys coming home, the right. cars pulling up the driveway, garage door mm. opener, you know, that kind of stuff. Must be a tough, yeah, tough mm. thing for the deaf guys. Mm. Yeah. Maybe they do that sort of, uh, it's a sort of concussion thing. Like they, oh, they talk feel about school the for the deaf. They hit oh. that big bass drum. Like the sonar? That's right. Yeah, no, for like, like to Gina, snap the ball. When they play, when the football team plays, the, 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 when the, the school of the deaf football team plays, to like snap the ball, they boom, boom, oh, boom. Oh, yeah. wow. Mm. That's cool. Now, is it a tell if you're deaf and you say to your stepmom, hey, when you come home, <laughs> can you rig can you <laughs> a gong around? Just a couple gong. of shots on the bass drum, please. I'm a big Carolina Panthers fan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Keep pounding. Interesting. I had no idea. Uh, Harry Styles, like, I wanted to not like him, but then I think I saw him on, like... SNL? I I don't remember if it was SNL. For some reason, I think it was, um, like, doing a... Doing a song for like the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of mm-hmm. Fame, those compilate mm-hmm. everyone's up on mm-hmm. stage and you're taking your turn. And he's like singing and playing the guitar, yeah. and I was like, oh, this guy's good. Yeah. Does he kind of remind you of like a David Cassidy? Like that mm. vibe? It's, is, is he our David Cassidy? I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm starting to now think about, you know, the Harry Styles. Oh, we'll have a Def Rack guy call in later this week to comment on the Pornhub thing. Okay. Um, I'm now going to alter my that it is my uh, Richard Jewell Michael Avenatti mm-hmm. sure. theory, which is that guy looks guilty and that guy looks like he knows what he's doing, and of course that one guy's guilty and the other guy didn't do anything, but they look yeah. that way. I'll come down um, the jawline. <laughs> there is there's a there is a um, there's a there's a double edged sword to that, which is like. Um, Oh, God, what was I? Uh, uh, Frampton, Peter Frampton. Okay. Peter Frampton was angelic looking, had big blonde hair. He was such a pretty boy back then. But he was a great guitar player. He was a great rock musician. But you'd look at him on like F- Frampton Comes Alive and go, oh, that guy's Leif Garrett. He looks yeah. easy. Like, you, you wouldn't, he was a pretty boy, poster right. for teeny boppers. <laughs> he didn't, you didn't, he was a virtuoso rock guitar player. Right. But you'd go, oh, get out. Come on with yeah. your pretty hair and your good looks and your, with your boy's charm. So there's a part where Harry Styles probably gets punished right. for like, oh, look at this good looking guy with his yeah. hot girlfriends and his long Yawn. hair. He doesn't know how to do anything. Right. It's sort of a John Mayer thing, but you go bring bring it back to right. um, be careful how you whatever. Daughters, but, yeah. but but, but they are good, good like yeah. blues guitarists. Yeah, it, it happens every once in a while where a good looking person knows how to do something. <laughs> well, it's like it's like a young John it's Depp. It's rare, but it happens. Like that, Gina Gretz a really good news <laughs> girl. She has a pretty uh-huh. face. That was nice. It's like a young Johnny Depp and a young Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, you know, like what do they know? But they're good. Well, they're good actors, and that is true. But for mm. me, it's got to be like. Plays mm-hmm. the guitar or right. something like you go. He's a pretty boy from a boy band. He doesn't know how to play right. whatever, and he does, yeah. you know. And once in a while, you do, and we do, you do degrade, you know. We, um, you can talk about uh, discrimination a lot in our society, but when I see a fat black guy pull up. I go, that guy can that swing an axe. Yeah. <laughs> that guy can play. You know, that guy, the skinny white guy. Look at him. He's a pretty boy. He don't know. Uh, you know that's that. right. So we do this a happy side to yeah. discrimination. Different kind of profiling. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of pretty boys in music, Page Six reports that singer Meatloaf is taking action <laughs> against the Dallas Hotel where he fell off the stage and broke his collarbone during an event. The 72-year-old singer filed a lawsuit against the Hyatt Hotel chain and the Texas Frightmare Weekend, which was held in May. They, it moves around kind of all summer and apparently is seeking monetary damages. In the court filing, Meatloaf claims the defendants profited from his fame but did didn't provide a safe work environment. And I'll show you in a second. So May 4th of last year, the singer took part in this Q&A. And as he was making his way across the stage, he kind of lost his balance. On He, he says, oh, he wasn't rocking out. No, he was no, oh, he's no. shuffling on loose wires, fell sideways sort of to the back of the stage. He was transported to a nearby hospital. Here was the quick stumble. I'll show you. Thanks for walking. 
walking across the stage. Felt. He's kind of wobbling for a second wow. and oh, down. Off the back, mm. grab the curtain. Yeah. He broke his collarbone? Yeah, he says he uh, had to turn down six tours. His last surgery was seven hours, and it's been a year and a half of misery. Um, you know what's interesting? In a OSHA world that we live in, like if you're doing a construction site, you have mm-hmm. to put up temporary railing around everything. If you're going to go up in the... And if you're going to go up in the cherry picker, you got to strap in right. and put the harness on. And like, we are nuts. I guarantee whatever venue they're at, the hotel, mm-hmm. the venue, whatever, there's no such thing as no railing on this thing. It's like railing all the time, everywhere, all the time. There's a million railing coats. Like, it has to be this height. The stuff can't be spaced out more than four inches. Like, a kid could get his head right. through that and get caught. Mm-hmm. Zero rules when it comes to the stage. Right. There's no. It's just the stage. I've been on a million stages. It's they're a, all different. They're, and this, some have stairs. Some have like a big and step. But they're flat one, black. There's one thing that they have in common. They're all, all flat black, black. And they all have a spotlight yep. in your face. And you can't, <laughs> can't see, see the audience right. at all. It right. is. And... It is, and what's death on a stage is looking down. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you can never, you have to be looking up to the balcony, walking around, like moving around. There is zero anything. Now, I'm not for guardrails, but what I'm saying, like, in a OSHA world that we live in where there's railing around everything, if I guarantee you go backstage, there's a handicap stall, the bathroom no. that has to have a bar on it for the handicap. Sure. Otherwise, they're going to find the theater. Whatever. As soon as you get out on stage, it's Wild West. It's just wild west. Uh, There's nothing there. Some once in a blue moon, someone puts a piece of skid tape or something like along the mm-hmm. edge or some reflective tape. But that's it. That's about it. How and many stages have a giant step where like two or three steps should be? Right. There's it feels that. Like at yeah. least half. Well, and it happens to everybody. I mean, a few months ago or sometime last year, Lady Gaga right off the stage, um, the little runway when a fa- she let a fan pick her up, well, and they you, both just tumbled you're off. You're gonna. Look, what's okay? With the two deaths of a performer are getting back toward the drum kit, like go to the back of the stage and then looking down. Those are the two right. things you're not allowed to do. So you have to go as far Push out on. as humanly possible mm-hmm. without looking down. Right. And with a Klieg light in your face and a black audience and black stage and that's it. And an eight foot drop. Of course, huh. this is going to happen. Yeah. Of course, this is going to happen. But there's never. There's good never point. anything. Very good point. You know what you should do? They should have one of those things. Like, you know in those uh, dog movies where they show the dogs hooked up to the chain mm-hmm. in the backyard and it's running at mm-hmm. the person? I think they did it in, uh, God, famously in uh, Raising Arizona. Like, yep. Just yep. enough. Just as the dog gets this close. Yeah, to, just snap bites. a tether onto your belt. Yeah. It'll get you just. Yeah. You That's cannot. Great. You can, can't. You stop at the edge of the stage. That's real good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is a pole in the middle of the stage. <laughs> <laughs> when you get angry. Snap it in. You That's move good. around with impunity. All right, one more. All right. Well, millionaires concerned about the end of the world are buying modern-looking luxury versions of bomb shelters for over uh, $1.5 million each, according to Fox News. Fancy doomsday condos in rural Kansas are reportedly on the rise. And Larry Hall, who's the owner and project manager at Survival Condo, said while most are buying the highly engineered facilities just in case, some people are using these souped-up pads to live out their golden years and retire there. Are those fake windows in yes, the last picture? Yes, because it's all... It's, it's all, underground. They're it's all drain. old missile silos, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the facility offers a range of you know, movie theaters, indoor shooting range, arcade, dog park, library pools and uh, he attests that these fortresses are built to last saying they are th- a thousand sorry these are thousand year structures that will outlast the greatest castles of Europe and the site says they're atlas missile silos turned into luxury condos I was trying to buy uh, like a radar platform for like Nike missiles that was on top of the hill in like Malibu a million years ago like where they would have housed them it's where the radar was, not where the Nike missiles were, mm-hmm. but the radar to that, tell gu- if there that was something guided coming them from, or something yeah, was. Awesome. And as a guy who used to do a lot of building, they were the walls were like three foot thick of reinforced concrete that went down into the earth like 10 feet. Like there's nothing you could do to that. You to were that trying place. to buy it? Well, so. <clears throat> it's a long story. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to expand on that a little bit. Yeah. It, <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, so it was, 
there was this there, there was this crazy thing like up there's this piece of property that was like on top of the hills like over Malibu off of like Mulholland or whatever and it had like a dirt road that went there it had its own driveway mm-hmm. and then it, they they cut the top of a mountain off and they made like two acres of just flat and they just built this one big square room it was like 30 by 30 with thick walls and everything it was, went down on the ground and then they had a tower above mm-hmm. it like a steel tower and people would just go there and like smoke pot, sit on the tower. And nice. when you climbed up to the tower, you could see downtown LA, you could see Malibu, you could see Simi Valley. It was incredible. And it and it was for sale. And it it was like it was like a million dollars, but it wasn't ten million dollars. It was like a million dollars. It was like for the greatest view oh you've God. ever had. Like, like downtown LA looked like it was right underneath oh. you. You were that far up. It was that amazing. And as long as you just to be developed it wasn't any there wasn't anything there no it's just like it was just a flat flat land one big building or one big mm-hmm. cement bunker and then a tower but it's like could you imagine if you glassed in that tower and you Pretty sat up there i mean it was great in your own driveway whatever and i you can look max Patton, see if they ever made anything about that i don't know nike missile radar tower malibu something if there it was one of those things where i like i kept saying to the person that was selling it i was like i will buy it but i need to know i can build yeah, something right. on it that is not like government land yeah. blah 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 he's sh- you're oh, showing wow. a picture of a different tower this one's this one's different than that one than the one we're looking at but and the person the realtor person kept doing the thing where they'd go like you can do it i'm just not going to put anything in writing you know and i'd go well you got to put it in writing yeah, and they go point. no no it's fine you can do it you can do it i'm just not going to put anything in writing we just kept going around in that circle and eventually they wouldn't put it in writing right. i didn't know because it was government owned right. and they sold it but the, i have the right to build something mm-hmm. there and i didn't want it if i couldn't work it's an on it and otherwise. blah 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 and there's the whole coastal commission and everything too which is your if, favorite if you don't get stuff by them so if they say no it is no right. and it's no forever i don't know off of mulholland maybe you'd put in max i think that, that picture that can put up was it is what it looks like now that's the site but here can oh, they up. did so somebody did change it oh i'm gonna be i'm gonna be angry i don't um, know i can't picture no this where is it the is. radar center i don't know this you, is the former nike missile control site la 96c the u.s army operated it from 56 to 68 with one purpose in mind, to be the a last line of defense from Soviet <laughs> planes that were coming down to drop an atomic wow. bomb over L.A. But is this in the hills above Malibu, like off of Mulholland or whatever? You can keep looking. Yes, it's, it's uh, he was, uh, Mulholland Drive, yeah. Wow. Uh, just yeah. west of the 405 in Encino. No, mm. I don't think this one's Encino. This was the radar tower, not the actual launch base but they still had to have a bunker because they had to operate like the radar tower. Jesus. think how much money that goddamn soviet union fucking cost this yeah. country like thanks a lot <laughs> we had to buy all this stuff and make all this stuff and do all this stuff and they're probably saying the same thing about us but and i blame what? i blame them yep. god the resources yeah it's off of mulholland it's kind of in malibu it's you up, could have pimped out that tower it's up the top of the hill all right bring it home gina grad you got it i'm gina grad and that's the news Quiet. The adults are talking. Gina, Gina, that was the news with Gina Grad.